Hey orchestra students, welcome to fourth grade orchestra. This is our very first video lesson together. My name is Miss Dagan. I am going to be your orchestra teacher this year in fourth grade and next year in fifth grade if you'd like to continue in middle school. So for our very first lesson today, we're going to be learning. We're going to be learning about our instruments for the first time. We're going to say hello to our brand new instruments, which is so exciting. You just got to take your instrument home for the first time. We're going to be learning the names of our strings today. We're going to be learning how to hold our instruments today. And we're going to be learning the parts of the instrument that you need to know. And finally, we're going to end with our very first song together. It's called the Ants Song like ants digging in the dirt, and that's gonna help us remember the order of our open strings. So we've got a lot in store for our very first lesson. I'm gonna ask you to check the timestamps in the video link so that you can see where the violin content starts and then you can see where the cello content starts. Please make sure that you have joined my Google Classroom. That is how we're gonna be staying in touch and that is where I'm going to be giving you all of our lesson materials and posting videos and that's where we can engage with each other the most. So again, I hope that you are super excited for our very first orchestra lesson and go ahead and check the timestamps for your instrument and keep watching at those times. All right, violinists, you found the right place. If you are learning violin, here we go. So very first lesson today on the violin. Let's say hi to our instrument. Hello, instrument. It is super exciting to get to hold your first instrument in your hands. Some people like to name their instrument. Maybe that's something you wanna do on your own. So hello, instrument, and thank you. We're gonna have a great year together. Let's talk about the parts of our instrument. Each string instrument in the classical string orchestra has four strings. We're going to learn the names of those strings today and a song. The violin has something called a shoulder rest and a chin rest. So here's your chin rest. That's where you're going to put your chin. Your violin also came with a shoulder rest. So this is something that you have to add on to your instrument. So the way I add this on is I, I hold my violin like this, turn it around, take my shoulder rest. I want it to form a sad face, not a smiley face. I want it to form a sad face when I'm holding my violin upright like this. So get your sad face, put one side on, and then slide up other side until it fits tightly. All right, remember you can always pause the video, try it, rewind if you're not sure what to do, rewatch, and move forward. So here's my sad face. I slide up both sides of the legs. See how it's on there? And then it's good to go. So that's my shoulder rest. We already learned about the chin rest chin. Other parts that we need to know include the bridge. This wooden piece is very, very delicate and it holds up your strings. It holds tension on the strings and that's what gives you um, the different string sounds that we can get. Please note that the bridge is not glued down. It is simply held by the tension of the strings running across it. Strings are held tight, keeping that little thin piece of wood, which is super delicate, keeping it steady. So if your bridge ever falls down, please let me know, and I would be happy to set, a, set up a time with you, and I can put it back up for you. But please do not try to put it up and apply glue underneath. So it's never glued down. That's our bridge. It's super delicate. You never want to rest your instrument down like this on top of the bridge. That's a no-no. Right. Other parts of our instrument that I want you to know, the fingerboard, so this black piece of wood that runs all the way down here, 
you guessed it, that's where we put our fingers. It is called the fingerboard. We also have some fine tuners. These little screws here at the bottom of your instrument are used for tuning. If you need your string sound to go higher or lower when you're starting your lesson and you're tuning your instrument for the first time, you would start with your fine tuners. And they're called fine because they do very just small adjustments to the pitch. The other tuning mechanism that we have is the pegs. The pegs make very large adjustments in pitch to the sound. For now, I'm going to ask that you do not try moving your pegs because if you do try and play with them, they hold a lot of tension on your strings and if you turn them too far, your strings can actually snap. We will learn how to use the pegs at a later time. For now, I just want you to know they're a tuning mechanism, they're there. If you need help with them, write me a note and I'll set up a time with you. All right, the last thing that we need to know for now about the parts is that these are called, these are called the F holes on our instrument because they're shaped like a beautiful letter F. And they're kind of like if you want to imagine a speaker and that's how the sound gets out. This is like the speaker for your instrument. All the sound is vibrating on the inside of the body of the instrument and the F holes is how the sound actually escapes and comes to our ears. So those are the parts of your violin, which is very, very exciting. The next thing I want to go over with you is the names of your strings. So if you're in my Google Classroom, you can find under our sheet music in our classwork, you'll find a document that looks something like this. Okay, So let's learn the violin string names. The skinny, skinny one is your E. Next over is A. Next over is D. And the biggest one is G. The thickest one is G. So I'll do that again. The skinny, skinny one is E. That's going to be your highest pitch sound. Then A. Then D. And G. E. A. D. G. Okay. Here's how I'm going to bring my instrument to my shoulder. Get your hit your uh, left hand fingers situated like this on the side of your instrument. And we bring it up like that to the shoulder. I'll do that one more time. I have my left hand fingers. I call them monster fingers. They're going to go chomp, 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 chomp. Monster fingers swoop up onto my left shoulder. Now I'm in playing position. I'm going to take my right hand, make a little claw, put it on the side of the fingerboard, thumb anchors, pointer finger releases, and I'm going to play each of my strings three times like this. sequence one more time. Instrument down. Your left hand is making these monster fingers. Chomp, chomp, chomp. My thumb is the thumb is on the back. Keep my monster fingers. There's nowhere else for it to go. I swoop the instrument up. Let's do that once more. Monster fingers, left hand. Thumb is on the back. There's nowhere else for my instrument to go. I'm not going to go this way. That feels really uncomfortable. Nowhere else for it to go. Here we go, up on the left shoulder. Right hand makes a little claw. Anchor the thumb. Pointer finger grabs and releases the strings gently. Notice how I'm doing this over the fingerboard. I'm not doing it here. I'm plucking the strings over the fingerboard. So let's hear these, these strings again. I'm going to play them each three times. Here's E. Next is A. Now, 
for the ants song, which is a song we can sing in order to remember the names and order of our strings. We're going to start with our really nice high voice for E. Bink, bink, bink. Look at all the ants, 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 digging in the dirt, 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 going under ground, ground, ground. Let's do that one more time together. It's a really, really high sound for your E. Use a nice supported voice. So it's eek, eek, eek. Look at all the ants, ants, ants for A. E then A. Digging in the dirt. D, D, D. Going under G, ground. Ground, ground, ground. So let's sing and play one time together. Ready, go. Dirt, 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 going underground, ground, ground. Go to rest position, monster fingers here. All right, so that is our very first information about our violin. Remember, students, that you can rewind, pause, stop this video at a moment that you need to take a minute and figure it out. That's kind of the beauty of doing these videos together. Remember, you can always pause the video, turn it back, and watch something over and over again until you get it. All right, so that's our lesson one on violin. All right, cellists, you found the right place if you are learning cello this year. So for our very first video lesson, we're going to say hi to our instrument. We're going to learn the parts of our cello instrument, the names of our strings, I'm going to show you how to hold and set up your cello, and then finally we will learn a song together, and that song will help us remember the order of our strings from high to low, and it's called the Ants Song. So first thing you should do is just say hello to your instrument and thank your instrument for a great year ahead of making music together. Some people like to name their instruments, so that might be something that you might want to do on your own time. Let's talk about the parts of the cello. All cellos have four strings, and we're going to talk about the names of those strings later. All cellos have something called a bridge, which is this piece of wood that holds the strings up. Please note that the bridge is super delicate and it is not glued down to your instrument. So if you ever have your bridge fall down, please let me know and I will be happy to put it back up for you. The bridge is not glued down to the instrument. It is simply held up by the tension of the strings running across it. It's a really delicate piece of wood. We never want to lay our cello down on its belly, again, because that it would be really delicate on that piece of wood. So we always want to lay our instrument, the cello instrument on the floor goes on its side like this not on its back, and definitely not on its belly. So again, that delicate piece of wood is the bridge, and it holds the tension across the strings. The other part of the cello that I want you to learn is called the fine tuners. Here they are. There's four fine tuners, one for each string. The fine tuners are little itty bitty screws that can help you to change the pitch of your open string if one of them is out of tune. We'll talk more about that in another lesson. The other tuning mechanism that you have on your instrument is the pegs. Here are the pegs. There are four of them, one for each of your strings. The pegs make very large adjustments to your open string sound. And as such, they're really delicate as well. And if you turn them too far, your strings could actually break and snap. So for now, I'm gonna ask you, please do not use your pegs. If you're having an issue with your instrument, let me know and we can make an appointment together and I will be happy to help you with tuning with the pegs. All right, we also need to know this 
first part of our beautiful cello instrument, on each side we have something called F holes. The F holes are like speakers in your sound system. All the sound is vibrating on the inside of your cello, the, the hollow inner body here, and the sound escapes and comes to our ears through the F holes. So these are like your little speakers. The last um, two parts of the instrument we're gonna learn about are the fingerboard, this black part that runs all the way down from the scroll to the bottom of the instrument. And that is, you guessed it, that's where we're gonna put our fingers. Not in today's lesson, but a future lesson. And then finally, I wanna show you your end pin. Here's my end pin all the way extended. Okay, let me sit down in my chair. This is how I want you to pull your end pin out. Sit down in your chair, hold your cello like a guitar. Then I'm gonna support my cello with one hand, and my right hand is going to find the screw for the end pin. Okay, so you're gonna want to, it probably comes to you like this, lefty loosey one turn, just enough to be able to pull that end pin. I'll do that one more time. Comes to you like this. Take the little screw, lefty loosey, one time. I'm not all the way unscrewing it. I don't want to pull the screw off and be holding it. I just simply loosen it once, enough for the, uh, the end pin to be able to slide out. The way you measure the correct length of your end pin is to take your right hand and approximately two hands length is gonna be the right length for you. So let me try it. One, two, and then really important is that you tighten that screw after you're done extending the end pin. Otherwise, your cello is gonna shoot down and hit the floor. So again, I tightened my screw again. I can even double check. That end pin is staying nice and steady. It's not going anywhere. So please make sure that you double check that you tightened that end pin screw. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so then I go from kind of my guitar position to one hand on the neck, one hand on the side. Let me carefully bring my instrument down, and that's where I would put it either on a carpet or into my um, end pin strap. So let me show you what my end pin strap looks like. I have it on the left leg of my chair. The loop is on the left leg of my chair and it extends out in front. So you're going to want to measure your end pin strap so that the cello so that the corners of the cello here sit just above your knees. So you might need to play around a little bit with that end pin strap length. You're looking for the corners of your cello being just above your knees. The other way you can check for the appropriate cello height is having this uh, peg, we learned about our pegs, have it touch your ear. So this is how I know I'm set up with the correct length of the end pin strap and then the correct length for the uh, end pin itself. So again, you might have to do some finagling with that to get it just right for you. Remember, you can always pause this video, rewind, watch how I did the end pin, look at the end pin strap, watch it a couple of times. So let's assume now that we are set up with our cello. I have my cello resting against my chest. I'm not slumping over my instrument. It's nice to give our instrument a hug but I really want to make sure I'm always bringing the cello to me or I'm not slumping over it. So I'll show you that again. Cello out with my left hand. Bring the cello to you. You're in control. Bring the cello to you. All right. Pretty easy to hold our cello from there. Again, it's being supported by the end pin and the end pin strap at the bottom. So let's go through the names of our strings. On cello, we want to start with our thinnest string here, it's called A. Next is D, then G, and finally C. I'll do 
that once more. You can even say the letters with me at home. A is the thinnest string. D, G, and C is the thickest string. So highest is the thinnest A. And let's listen to what those strings sound like. Okay, I had to just retune my cello, so I'm jumping back in the clip here. So I'm going to play my three strings for you now that I've retuned my cello. Take my right hand, hello, right hand, make a little claw. Right hand thumb is going to anchor to the side of the fingerboard. Remember we learned about our fingerboard. The bottom of the fingerboard, anchor it here. Notice how I'm not putting it any lower than that. It goes on the black part, fingerboard. Pointer finger releases, and we'll start on our thinnest string, which is called A. Let's play each string three times. Ready, go. A, A, A. Next string is D. G. C. Let's do that again, starting on A, your thinnest string. Ready, and go. Next string. So let's learn a song together to help us remember our, our open strings. It's called the Ants Song, and it's about ants digging in the dirt, going underground, all the way to China. And when we go down to sing our low C, I actually flip up an octave to sing in my singing voice because it gets a little too low for me. I'm guessing that you as fourth graders might want to try that as well, flipping up the octave with me. So listen while I sing, and then you can try it on your own. Ants, 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 digging in the dirt, 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 going underground. to China, China, China. So hear how I flipped up the octave between G and C. We'll do that one more time, starting with A, ants, ready, and sing. Ants, 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 digging in the dirt, 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 going under, round, 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 all the way to China, China, China. So that mimics the names of our open strings, A, D, G, and C. So that concludes the information for our first violin and cello lesson together for fourth grade. I just want to remind everybody that you can find helpful documents, pages from the book, um, the words to the ants song, all these things can be found in our Google classroom and it's essential that everybody joins Google Classroom. All students join it because that's how we're going to be getting all of our communication this year. All right so go ahead and practice the ant song, setting up your instrument, learning about all the parts of your instrument. Maybe consider giving your instrument a name. Uh, that's your work to do between now and next time. I hope you have a great rest of your day wherever you are and whatever you're doing and we will check in a little bit later.